hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of Conservative Nation with me, your gracious host, Jermaine Baccio. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Of course, we got our special guest today, Barry Noosebaum from American Truth Project. How you doing, sir? Great to be with you as usual, Jermaine. Absolutely. Hey, um, it's been a, a pleasure, and we're so glad to have you back here on this show. Uh, for the people who do not know who you are, why don't you just explain uh, who you are? Um, I'm going to be showing your page here. Uh, happy to, Jermaine. American Truth Project uh, is a nonprofit educational institution. We educate on four primary issues revolving around the security and protection of the United States. Uh, our issues are terrorism, uh, foreign and domestic, primarily Islamic in nature and the threat it poses to America. We talk about uh, America's Middle Eastern policies and we talk about America's relationship with our most strategic ally uh, in the Middle East, if not the world, which is Israel. Uh, Israel is the canary in the coal mine fighting on the front lines against terrorism and helps us out a great deal. We work together on a constant basis. And with my uh, special connections with the state of Israel, uh, I'm able to bring our viewers sometimes some uh, unique insights they can't get elsewhere and at the same time provide news on a constant basis. So people that want to know about what we do, they can just type in find Barry dot com it's much easier than american truth project that'll take you to the website you can sign up for free you'll get emails you'll get videos you'll get our news on a constant basis we never charge for anything uh, our mission is to teach people the truth about what america is facing both on a foreign and uh, overseas uh, international relations basis and that's what we're about and i'm glad to share this with your viewers once again jermaine Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys go ahead and check out findberry.com. It's a fantastic website. It'll bring you to American Truth Project where you'll, where you'll get, like uh, Barry said, all his material there. You can go ahead and subscribe to his newsletter and go ahead and donate, ladies and gentlemen. Um, help Americans who are helping our country. All right. So, Barry, 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 once again, you're on this show. And let me tell you, um, the world does not stop. We're getting a whole bunch of stuff going on, and you're the right man to deal with it, especially on these type of topics here. So we got some uh, topics here that we're going to be discussing, and I know that you are one of the guys uh, to speak about it. So the first one up here we're going to be speaking about is a Palestinian lawyer named Dr. Laura Kalab. And she's being um, called out for anti-Semitic tweets. And she still has her medical license despite being fired. And this is an uh, article that comes from the inquisitor.com. Uh, Let me go ahead and transition here for the folks. And as you guys can see here, the Cleveland clinic doctor who says she would presumably give Jews the wrong medicine can still practice medicine and that is the tagline in this article it I mean Barry you know uh, I don't know what to say about this here as you know here in America if you're conservative if you uh, represent truth in the light let me tell you they kick you off they make sure to censor you they make sure to ban you but people like her let me tell you they get free reign what's going on it's it's so horrific and i can't even believe this is a true story germane this is a doctor who was practicing medicine up till uh just a few weeks ago at the cleveland clinic a very prestigious hospital and she was teaching there and her Twitter account was filled with not one but dozens of vicious anti-Semitic tweets, the kind that you might have read coming out of Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s. The one that finally got her dismissed as a doctor in residency at the Cleveland Clinic Hospital was one that said 
when she has Jewish patients, she's going to give them the wrong medicine with the intent to kill them. So here she is tweeting her plans for uh, murder on a contemporary basis, like right now, and all that happened to her, Jermaine, is they let her go. She still has a medical license. Now keep in mind the Hippocratic Oath, which is to do no harm to your patients, regardless of race or creed or politics or national origin, to save everybody, friend or foe, enemy or ally, apparently is not being enforced with her. The thought that she still has her medical license, that can, she can still prescribe medicine, she can still kill people with her medical license hanging out front of her office is disgusting. And yet, very little outcry, I don't know where it should be, but I'll tell you something. If this woman had said, God forbid, I'm going to kill all the N-word people, or I'm going to kill all the Hispanic people using derogatory terminology like she did for Jews, uh, oh my God, she'd be hiding in a hole. But for some reason, telling people publicly through her Twitter that she plans to kill Jews with medicine prescribed wrongly she's still around. She still has her license. She can still have a license to practice medicine and make money with people that think like she does. And we're talking about 2019, Jermaine. I'm horrified and your viewers should be too. You know, Barry, you know, one thing that gets me is that how evil her tweets are. One of her tweets um, is this annoying to go to school in a city full of Jews because everywhere I go I hear about the wonderful Israel about to go uh, about to tell this guy to STFU and um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows the acronym of that and there's another one after this debate I have to watch the movie on the Holocaust and write a paper on it I'm going to be brutally unsympathetic Sorry, not sorry. You know, um, Barry, how do these people get away with this type of stuff? You know, it's really... I, I, I just she, don't know. She went to a Jewish medical school, and she was surrounded by Jews. And, and then she was in New York City, surrounded by Jews. Now, this is a Palestinian-American who believes that Israel should be destroyed, that Jews should be killed, and she got her medical license. I'm horrified. She ought to be, in some way, completely stripped of any ability to carry out her dastardly plan. And I hope everybody in Ohio contacts the Ohio Medical Board to get her license yanked. She doesn't deserve to be anywhere near medicine or the ability to minister to people's health. She's an evil, evil person. You're, you're absolutely right here, Barry. And there's another article here. It comes from the front page, uh, mag.com. And it explains uh, the outrage of a lot of medical doctors um, who are trying to get her, um, you know, her medical license pulled. You know, um, I believe there should be more than just the medical doctors. I mean, it, it, this should be front page. Um, here in America, national news. Why do you think the uh, national news is trying to bury this story? I would think this type of story here would be national. You would hope so, and, and that was the point I made a few minutes ago, that if it was any other minority group, it would be front page and she would have to be in Canada or Mexico or back in uh, the Middle East by now, having been run out of the country. For some reason, this is just, well, politically incorrect, but not horrific, and it should be in the horrific category. It makes me sad as an American that we don't treat this sort of thing the way we should. It's really disgusting, it's horrific in its nature and its threats, and uh, like you, Jermaine, I don't have a explanation that makes any sense to me as to why there's not more outrage and why it's not headlines across the country. Mm -hmm.